Hello, I wanted to jump on today and do a quick walkthrough edit using the new Meadow presets. I'm editing this session today and it was shot at sunrise and we had a whole lot of different types of light during the hour that we shot. So I thought this would be a good session to give you a little demo of the Meadow presets and the Lumi tools as well I'm going to be using in this session as well. So I will give you a look. I'm working on a bigger screen today, which is why I'm looking all over the place because I love working on a desktop screen. So this is the session here. So I actually love sunrise because there's so many different types of light that you can shoot in. And I find that the blue hour light before the sun rises is so beautiful. Um, I find it nicer than blue hour at um, in the evening for some reason I just find it's a little bit softer and I really love this type of light it's one of my favorites so what I'm going to do today is I'm going to use so these are the new Lumi AI tools that have recently been released so these are AI tools that you can use on all of your images so I'm going to use some of those today in this session and then the meadow presets I'm going to use them today as well so the SK1 is the foundational preset that I have created the whole pack around so I'm going to edit with that one today that's the most versatile one that I've tested and used in like a whole lot of different scenarios lighting skin colors um, different locations different camera bodies so the first preset in all of my packs is the most versatile preset so today I'm going to edit this session using meadow and it has a whole lot of different light in it so you can see that we started in blue hour and then the sun started to come up and then we've got some beautiful direct sun images here um, right through to um, when it was full sun so going to start here so this is the raw so i'm going to apply meadow straight up to that one which looks beautiful to start with so i think that i might increase the temperature I usually apply the preset and then I change the temperature I'll make the adjustments that I need to in the basic panel here and then if I want to change anything else I'll work through the rest of the settings but often I pretty much only need to stay up here if there's not too much that I want to change um, so the lighting in that is really beautiful I will straighten the horizon in this one I don't do that for every image and I'm going to come back and show you what I do in terms of different objects. So I do use the spot removal tools in Lightroom. If I have a whole lot of objects that I want to remove, I actually take the photo into Photoshop and I will give you a quick look at the tool that I use in there. That's really fast and shooting on the beach on the Gold Coast. There is so many different um, things in the background, people, umbrellas, different things. So I'm often doing that. <laughs> so here we go. So this one, meadow, there we go, straight up. I think that looks beautiful right there. I'll probably remove her swimmer line there and this person over here. And that looks beautiful. Now what I do is I walk through all of my images and edit them and then at the end I'll apply grain across them all and sync that and then I will also then go in and do the spot removal. So I just kind of like to do all of the base edits first and then I'll go in and make those final changes. So that's Meadow. So I'm going to bring the exposure down a little bit and straighten that up a tiny bit. And I've got a few different tools in here. So I find that because this is blue hour, I actually really like the light in this. So I'm not going to do much to the sky, um, but I can show you in a few future images what I would do. So this one, I'm going to apply meadow, lift the exposure just a little bit. And I feel like it's a little bit too bright over here. So I want to even it out. So I'm going to grab a linear gradient and bring that across here and just reduce the exposure just a little bit over in that corner and little things such as scratches and blemishes that are not permanent I do remove those um, 
in my images. If it was like a freckle or a mole or anything like that, I never remove those. So that is what I would do for that one. Now, one of the most used tools that I have in here with the Lumi tools are subject pop and brighten. So I have a subtle one and then I have a one that's a little bit stronger. So I will often use subject pop and brighten nearly in all of my images. So if you click on that, what that is doing is if you come over here and click on your mask area, it is actually applying a pop and brighten mask to all of your subjects. So that's it on and off. So it's nothing too harsh. It gives a nice pop to the skin tones and to just the overall subjects. And I love using that. I use that pretty much in every image. The other tool that I have in here, Subject Enhance, actually focuses more on the details of the subject. So the eyes, the hair, it has like a little bit of skin softening in it as well. So you can play around with each of those, um, but my go-tos usually are these ones here. So I'll show you how the other one works as well. So here is Meadow applied. So I'm just going to reduce the exposure a little bit. I think the lighting is so beautiful in this. So I am going to use the pop and brighten subtle in this to just help the subject pop here a little bit. And then I'm going to use the subject enhanced details to give you a look at what this does. So I have applied that now. And what's that, what that has done is it's applied a little bit more saturation to the lips, whitened the teeth a tad, popped like the eyes a little bit, and it's applied very light skin softening and a little bit of hair texture. So that is what the enhanced details do. And you can turn any of these off really easily by clicking on this and it will remove it from your image. I love um, edits that are a little bit more on the softer side. So none of these tools are going to look heavily um, edited or photoshopped or anything like that. So they're a really beautiful addition to applying those adjustments to your image really quickly by clicking on it. Um, and it's not gonna be anything too intense that people are going to notice that you've done to your image as such. Like I feel like they're quite subtle, but they really give, um, yeah, they really help balance out the image really well. So I use those in pretty much all of my images okay so we're going to apply meadow now what i will do often if an, if a preset is working across a whole lot of images i will sync it um, across all of the images i'm just giving you a look at how i would edit a few of these so this one i probably would straighten up a tad and i'm going to use the pop and brighten in this one and you can always grab the mask and then change the adjustments yourself as well. So if you feel like it was too bright or too dark, you can change that there. So I'm going to leave that there. I think that looks beautiful. Okay, I'll give you a little look um, at the black and whites in the meadow pack. So I've got Harlow, which is a stronger, deeper, more contrasty black and white, which is really beautiful. And then Palm is a softer, as the name suggests, a softer, dreamier black and white. So I go back and forward between these two, um, but they are my go-tos at the moment. So for this session, I'm feeling like I'm going to use Palm. I'm going to lift that just a little bit. And I'm actually going to lift the blacks a little bit in that one. And I'm going to leave it there. Okay, so this one I'm going to bring in the cropping around about there. The horizon is pretty straight, which is pretty amazing for me because I always shoot very crooked. i um, going to use meadow on this one. I'm going to bring down the exposure just a little bit. So that looks beautiful right there. Now I'll give you a look at the um, blue sky enhanced tools. So in the Lumi pack, there's a whole lot of different tools in here. So a few that I'll use often are the sky brushes, and then there's also the skin brushes in here as well. So I'll give you a little look at the sky brushes. So I might use for this one blue sky enhance. So if you do really like um, a pop to your skies, this 
tool is amazing. So there's two different versions here. If you want it to be um, even stronger again, you can use the enhanced one, but um, sky blue enhance is often what I will use. So this is the image without it, and that's the image with it. Now there's a few different um, things that you can do. So we'll have a look where that's being applied to. It's actually only applied it up there, so it's not affecting our subjects, which is really good. I will give you another example of let's apply meadow to this one. I'm going to reduce the exposure to around about there, warm it up a tiny bit. Now I'm going to apply the subject pop and brighten to this one. And then if you wanted to bring back the sky, here is a few things that you can do. So I'm going to use the sky blue enhance tool. Now what that is going to affect is the whole sky here. So if we turn on the overlay, you'll see that it's affecting right up to the subject's head, which in some images can look quite unnatural. And this, so this is the way that you can change that. And I often use these masks when I'm using the sky when it's affecting the subject. So you come in here and you go to subtract and there's lots of different ways that you can do this. For this image, I would grab a radial gradient filter and actually bring that around my subject's head just like that so that the mask is going to gradually fade away as it comes becomes closer to the subject. So I would do that. And sometimes I will do this as well um, on the horizon line too, so that it's not like a really harsh end to the mask that I'm applying. I'll actually apply, I'll give you a little look. Um, we will turn it on. So sometimes I do this as well. So I'm going to grab a linear gradient and pull that up. So that you can see what oops see what that is applying to and um, I would soften the sky as it comes down so I'll show you that in a different one but that's how you do it if you don't want the mask to apply to all of the subjects or different parts of your image you actually use the subtract tool so that's a very handy tool to use okay we are going to use meadow on this one I accidentally cut his hand off because I turned around and he was looking up at me and it was a super cute moment. And yes, anyway, I love that photo. So I'm going to del deliver it anyway, even though his hand's cut off, which <laughs> I don't love. Now, if you've got photos that are where the subject has direct eye contact with the camera and you wanted to just enhance their eyes, there's an eye enhance tool in here, which I will often use for that. And that's nice and subtle, so I'll show you what that's doing. So it's just giving a pop to the eyes. There's a little bit of saturation, a little bit more brightness to the whites, but nothing too crazy. So we'll bring that back out. That looks great as it is. So next one, this is a slow shutter shot. I actually love the colors in this, um, but I also love slow shutter in black and white. So I might do both for them. So I'm going to warm that up. So that's meadow applied in one click. And then what I might do, if I ever want to change something to black and white or deliver an image in both, I go create virtual copy. And I've got another copy of that file there. And I'm going to use Palm for this one because I feel like that's what I've used in the gallery and I feel like it's quite dreamy. So I'm going to lift the exposure just a little bit, reduce the highlights, and I might again bring back some of the sky. So I'm going to click Blue Sky Enhance. Obviously this is black and white, but it's going to add a little bit of pop and contrast back to the sky, um, to the clouds there as well. So that is done. Okay. Meadow for this one. So I feel like Meadow is beautiful and super versatile for lots of different skin tones. So that's without, that's one click applying it. Now for this image, your eye is naturally drawn straight into him and I'm feeling like this is a little bit too bright. 
So I do have a tool in here that you can do. Where are we? Background. We've got background, cool down, dark and lighten. So I'm actually going to darken the background a little bit. You could obviously use a brush. Previous to the AI masks, I would grab a brush and brush this on myself. So these are really, really great because they speed up that whole process. And because we're drawn right into his eyes, I am going to use the eye enhance tool to bring back his eyes a little bit. And then these are the skin softening tools that are really beautiful to use. And once again, they aren't going to look crazy airbrushed or anything over the top. So I've got a light, medium and a strong. So I'm going to use the light in this one and that is applied there. He's got a bit of a red scratch on his face, so I would probably remove that. And there we go. I don't know where that grabbed that from. Hang on a minute. I will always grab it from the skin surrounding the area that I'm removing so the texture is the same. Okay, this one we are going to use Meadow and kind of love that straight off the bat. I think the skin tones look really great and there we go. Okay, so now the sun has just popped up over the horizon. So now we've got some full sun images. I love shooting in full sun and turning my subjects around towards the sun or I shoot from the direction so that the sun is um, directly on them and they aren't actually backlit. So this one here, I think that's the raw, that is the raw. <laughs> Okay, so this is meadow applied. So that's before, that's after. Now I've got a reduce orange skin tool in here. If you feel like sometimes the skin is too orange, if you're shooting in direct light, you can use these tools here. So I've got orange skin and red skin reduce. And then I also have another tool up here, direct light soften. So that softens the harshness of the light that can happen in a direct sun image um, if you don't love that or you just want to kind of reduce it if it's too saturated and it's too intense so meadow on this one I think the colors look beautiful and going to reduce that a little bit apply subject pop and brighten to this one and there we go okay so this one we are the light is definitely a little bit harsher on them and they're looking very orange. So I'm going to crop this one straight away, being careful not to cut off their hands um, and straighten that up. <clears throat> then apply meadow. Okay, now it's feeling quite warm. So I'm going to reduce exposure and the temperature a little. I feel like it's fine up here in terms of the white balance, but down here it's quite orange. So... It's so a few different things that I would probably do. So for this one, I might grab the direct light soften and I'll show you how that works. I'm gonna put that on here. So that has softened the light a little bit, removed a little bit of the saturation of the orange and reduced the contrast a little bit. And I feel like their skin is still a little bit too orange. So I'm going to grab the orange skin tool and apply that as well. And I might lift the shadows a little bit. So that's the before, that's the after. Okay, this one again. This was all shot in auto white balance, which I don't actually ever do, but I wanted to test it for this session to kind of see how well the camera did. Um, so, and just so I could, yeah, have a little look at how it worked because I often um, will always shoot in Kelvin at a session because I, my camera I find isn't always super accurate, but you don't have to shoot in Kelvin if you don't want to <laughs> um, because the camera, yeah, the camera is pretty intuitive these days, but I have had issues with it in the past and I often shoot on the warmer side and I've found that my camera is quite cool. So I do love to shoot, um, in Kelvin for that reason. I just feel like it makes editing a little bit faster, but it's actually done pretty well in this session. So, okay. So this is meadow applied 
it's looking very warm so I'm going to bring down the temperature just a little bit to around about there I feel like the blues are a little bit too intense so I always come into the color mixer panel here um, I'm going to reduce the saturation of the blue a little bit and just brighten that up and now the skin is looking too orange so I'm going to grab the subject reduce the orange skin tool and that is applied and I feel like that looks quite nice I might come in here into the orange color again and reduce the saturation of the orange just a tiny little bit more and I think that looks really beautiful so that is the before and that is the after okay so I'm going to crop this one crop that person out and when someone's gaze is looking a certain way I love to leave more white space in that area and I feel like it just directs your eye out that way and it just balances the images a little a little bit better so that's how I would always crop an image um, rather and in an ideal world I would probably have her over here a little bit more um, and you'd probably be able to see what she's looking at but I love this shot so I'm going to include that for her so I'm going to use metal on this one and she's looking a little bit bright and a bit orange I'm going to bring the exposure down reduce the temperature to around about there and what are we before and after I often use the before and after um, which I use the back space on my keyboard just so that I can compare the colors make sure that things like her sarong um, clothing whatever it is in the image isn't too far from what it was naturally because I love a natural timeless edit and I don't want the colors to be too dramatically different so that is a really handy way um, to check your edits as you are going so I'm going to use the reduce orange tool on this one as well and I think that looks beautiful her face is a tiny little bit bright so I'm going to reduce the highlights just a little bit and there we go okay this is a really fun shot I'm going to use metal on this one I actually feel like I'd love this one in black and white um, so I'm going to use palm on this one and ridge I might bring the whites up just a touch going to reduce the contrast just because this location this huge rock is quite harsh okay next one I'm going to use metal on this one and we're going to lift the exposure just a little bit reduce the temperature and the use the pop and brighten tool I might actually use the full strength one on this one so that's applied to them and I think that looks great okay so this was a shot I turned around quickly it's overexposed for my liking just a little bit because I love to be able to retain a little bit more detail in the sky um, but still a super cute photo so I wanted to keep that one in the gallery so I'm going to crop that to there um, totally personal choice whether you leave in sun flares or not I do leave them in lots of images if they're like over someone's face or something I will often remove them or I will really try and look in my camera when I'm taking the shot and make sure the flare is not in a place that it's going to be like too crazy distracting um, okay so I'm going to apply <laughs> meadow to this one I'm going to reduce the temperature a little bit so that their skin tones look good going to apply the subject pop and brighten the full strength one and I'd love to bring back a little bit of the sky so I'm going to use the sky over expose tool and that's going to bring it back a little bit I'm going to probably bring that up just a touch and I will leave that there okay next one another full sun shot going to apply meadow I also love with full sun using black and white just because there's such a high contrast between 
the light and the darks, which is something that I love in black and white. So I would probably use um, the palm preset on this one, or I would do it in both black and white. So for this one, I'm going to use meadow and reduce the temperature just a little bit to probably around about there. Okay. This is another reason why sunrise is awesome and I love shooting back towards. Um, so the sun is behind my back in this image. And when you do that and you turn around, you get some really beautiful colors in your sky. So I love shooting backlit, but I also love shooting like this and um, bringing back lots of these colors into my image. So I'm going to apply meadow to this one and bring the exposure up a little bit. It's looking a little bit warm, so I'm going to bring that down and I'm going to apply the subject pop and brighten just a little bit. She's feeling a little bit too overexposed, so there's a few different ways you could do that, but I'm going to grab, um, press K and grab a brush and I'm just going to brush over the brightest part of her body and just bring it down a little bit to around there. And that is all I would do. I might actually drop the saturation of the blue just a touch. Okay. Next one, I put on my lens baby lens, which is amazing. This is a really dreamy soft lens. It's a manual focus lens. So it can be quite tricky with kids, but it um, has this beautiful painterly effect. So I think this was shot at, if it's going to let me have a look um what aperture was this shot at it's not going to tell me i think this was maybe around 2.8 um but the wider open it is the more painterly the effect is so this is a really beautiful lens now i don't love um when i shoot i always try and crop not at <laughs> not like this i usually um, never try and crop at the ankles or the knees like at an actual joint so I will always try and crop around about there or a little bit higher because it's not as jarring for the eyes. In this one, I might crop around about there. Um, but I'm going to apply meadow to this one. And it's feeling, it's a little bit different. You can see on these ones were shot on a 35 Sigma art. And then this one, the colors render a little bit differently because it's a different lens so I am going to reduce the temperature on that a little bit and it's feeling a tiny bit green so I'm going to change the tint which I haven't done on any other images except now that I've changed the lens so that can definitely happen um, I'm going to reduce the temperature once again a little bit so that is how I would edit that one Okay, this one, we were about to leave and I turned around. So this is overexposed once again, but I wanted to include these because this happens all the time. Like you're never going to get everything technically perfect in camera, um, especially with kids when the light is always changing. But um, I do often obviously suggest to get things as spot on in camera as you can, because you're always going to have the best result when it comes to editing but it's great to know how far you can push your files as well, depending on what camera you shoot with, the dynamic range and how the shadows are when you lift them. Um, so I'm shooting on a Canon R6. That's what all of these have been shot with. So I will bring that probably to there, warm it up a little bit. This was the lens baby again, which is why it's got that very painterly, not sharp effect, which I love. Um, and I'm going to bring back the sky in this one as well. And I think that is beautifully balanced. I might lift the temperature just a touch to make it a little bit warmer. And there we go. Okay, last shot that I was going to show. This is meadow. Um, I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit. Um, and the other thing I wanted to show you was in the presets, I have lens corrections turned on for all of the presets. Um, and as you can see, because this is like a more unique lens, Lightroom have not actually picked up the maker model of this lens. Whereas in 
if we come back here, it has recognized that this was shot with a Sigma. So sometimes if you're using a more unique lens, um, you will have to come in here and find it yourself. So if I come down to Lens Baby, it's then picked it up. So it was a 56 velvet that this was shot with. And if you want to, if you've never played around with this, so it just kind of assists with the warping that your lens creates. Sometimes I have this off and sometimes it's on. Personal preference, um, I have got this built on in most of the presets, but you can easily amend this in the lens corrections area if you don't want that to be applied. So I'm going to lift the exposure a little bit on this one and I actually love the horizon like that, so I'm going to leave it. Okay, so the other thing that I wanted to show you in terms of spot removal, my favorite way to do this is like these tools are awesome and I do use those all the time um, for little things but if I'm somewhere where there's multiple things that I need to remove the way that I love to do that is I go to photo up the top and then I go to edit in photoshop and there's a tool in here that is super handy so I will often leave this to the end and then go through and remove the objects in a variety like in all different images um, it's just a lot faster so if i zoom in here i'll show you so over here it's called the remove tool and if you come down this second one here the remove tool and it is super accurate so i'm going to select them and it's going to load slowly <laughs> or not at all let's try another one here there we go. I don't know why this is not loading. I'm not sure. I will have to come back and figure out why that is doing that. Of course, that's doing that while I am showing you guys. Anyway, you saw in those two different sections. Let me have a look what's going on here. There we go. <laughs> no idea why. <laughs> Third time lucky. But that is what I find is the most um, just the quickest way to remove objects in an image. So once I've done that in Photoshop, I will actually press command save, command S on my keyboard and then close out of this. And it will save a duplicate file here, which will be a TIFF file. So this is the original one that had the objects in the background. So I will just reject that one and keep the new edited file. So that's how I do that when I go through my images. I'll have a little look and show you another one. So photo edit in Photoshop. Takes a few seconds to open. I'll often zoom in and grab. So we've got the remove tool is selected here and you just grab the objects that you want to remove. Now I've obviously been using <laughs> um, different clone tools and removing objects for years and this is just the quickest way that I've found and I found it the most accurate, like it fills in the area really, really well. So that is what I do, command save, exit out of there and I have all of my images flagged and so when I say reject a file, I come over here and I press X on my keyboard and that is sending it to rejected, which means it's removing the flag so that I'm just keeping all of my flagged images. And then at the end, when I'm editing a session, I'll always open in this grid view and just go back and make sure that everything is looking good and that everything's matching in terms of colors, exposure and um, that it's all working for you. The other thing that I like to do at the end of a session when I've edited everything is to apply the grain to the photos. So the reason I do this at the end is because if I've used different presets throughout a session, which I do sometimes, um, and if there's black and whites and color, sometimes they have different amounts of grain built into the preset. So what I will do is I often do this last. So if I grab the photo, the develop tool. Now, if you have the original creative tools, um, there's some grain settings in here. So we'll often use the grain 
the medium grain, which I love the look of. So I've applied that to that first image. And then what I'll do is I'll select all, sync, check none of those except for the grain, and then synchronize that across all of the images so that the grain is the same across all of those. So that is often the step that I'll use. And if you do have these tools, that's a really easy way to apply the grain. Otherwise, you can do that um, on your own and make adjustments in the effects area here in the Lightroom panel. I hope that that was really helpful. If you have any questions, jump in below to the comments or come over into the Facebook group or feel free to contact me. Um, you can check out the presets on the Storykeeper website and the Lumi tools as well.